Okay, welcome back everybody. I believe this is part five. It's been a, almost three weeks, I guess, since I showed anything on the Philco 54C. Uh, took a little vacation. Um, there is a, there is a uh, surprise from that vacation that you will see soon. Maybe not today, but you will see it fairly soon. I think you'll get a kick out of it. Uh, let's see where we're at on this. I've put all the resistors, and I'd say 95% of the resistors needed to be changed changed out. Uh, the wiring, if it was good, I left it. If it wasn't cracked, uh, this this type of wiring had a cloth covering. Then it was wound with like silk or something on the inside, so it had like a double insulation. So as long as it was good, uh, I left it alone. As you can see, it's very crowded. Uh, I alluded to in the other videos that some, I believe in the beginning, the very first one, I didn't think anybody had been in here, but now I'm, I'm almost certain it had been repaired years ago. And because, it, I, you know, if one, I have found three of these blocks wired in correctly. Now the components were correct inside, but the terminals uh, were incorrect. But the wiring had been changed to meet the uh, uh, the way these had been rewired. I don't know if whoever wired it said it don't matter as long as you put it back like that it's fine. And, and you know, but they didn't think about the poor slob you know, 50 years later or so, saying, scratching their head, which well, I, I went back and wired it according to the schematic. Now, uh, talking to the other Philco gurus, and I'm not a Philco guru, trust me, uh, they say that a lot of Philco's, or Philco has been noted for changing stuff and not updating the schematic. So we found three of these. I, I don't think that was a Philco. If I'd found one of these blocks wired totally different, then maybe maybe the factory messed up on that one time. You know, but I found three of them. So there you go. Uh, another thing that I found that was different from the schematic was on the 78 tube, the uh, IF amplifier tube. Pin four and pin five are tied together, comes down, goes across, and then before it goes to B minus, it goes through a 300 ohm flexible resistor, okay? What I found is four and five were not tied together. Five came down and went through that 300 ohm resistor. However, pin four went straight down to the common ground or B minus, whatever you want to call it. So that was a difference. It was factory wire too. I believe that wasn't a change. I believe that. Um, the, the resistances all look pretty good down in here. Uh, there was this particular uh, C36. Uh, it went from this output and it was wired differently. And I believe somebody, when they redid it, broke pin or the terminal of pin one off. I think I showed it to you in a previous video. And so they just went with pin two and three. And that's fine. But when they did, they tied this side of the capacitor to the output plate of the output tube. And instead of coming all the way down here to B minus or common ground all the way down, they went to B plus, which was basically, they took and tied this capacitor across the input of the output primary transformer. So I put it back away according to the schematic. Uh, what I lack is putting the speaker back in and putting a power cord on it. I put a fuse. This is where the, it had a, a, a metal plate for the back and 
uh, it was missing and it also had a uh, a power switch which when you remove the back killed power so it kept people out of the back you've seen that on the this was ahead of their time uh, you, you saw those in the in the 50s and 60s but uh, so what I did is I utilized that hole for the fuse holder because I'm running out of space now I've got to come in here and put a uh, put a, my power cord in and so uh, I'm thinking I might be able to put sneak a terminal block right here uh, for my power cord so uh, let's do all that and fire it up speaker back in everything wired back up um, got the tubes in got the power cord uh, let me show you what I did for the power cord Maybe you can see down in here. I uh, put a terminal strip here uh, so I just didn't heat shrink it or anything like that. So there we've got that. Let me show you something else. Let me rearrange the camera and show you one test we're going to do before we, we fire this thing up. Okay, I'm sporting a new. Uh, meter an RCA uh, WV98 Charlie uh, compliments of Josh Bowman good subscriber friend neighbor uh, partner in crime whatever you want to call it and uh, anyway um, I've got it on the ohm scale I've got it times 10 and so what I'm going to do is I'm just I've got the volume or the power switch on and I'm just going to check just like we checked uh, remember the AA5s we, we would check the uh, filaments uh, now this doesn't say there's not anything shorted in the high voltage but this is the filaments and we're reading looks like about a hundred and sixty seventy eighty about a hundred and eighty ohms which is about right with it cold and uh, so at least it's not dead shorted so we're still going to bring it up with a variac but uh, I thought I'd give you that quick little test because of the uh, to check see if the uh, if there's anything in the uh, line that uh, makes it shorted now like I say there's no guarantees and when we bring the high voltage up that there won't be any problems there but uh, at least that is a, a preliminary check so let's uh, let's let's hook all this up and, and bring it up slowly okay hopefully you can see the meter I try to arrange it where you can see the meter not a whole lot to see of the radio but uh, we're gonna make sure the very acts down through the isolation transformer and we'll bring it up in increments Here we are at about 25 volts. We're looking at about 200 milliamps. That's not a bad deal. The light is illuminated slightly. Okay. We'll let that uh, settle a little bit for a minute or so since these are new capacitors. Let's go up to about 90 volts. We may be starting to hear some sound here shortly. Current's looking pretty good. Still less than 300 milliamps. That's about 90 volts. Don't hear anything yet. Maybe a good sign. Let's let it sit there a minute. It's going up to around 115 volts. Should hear something.
I did some troubleshooting, guys, and uh, found out this has gone out to lunch and didn't come back. Uh, check the meter over here. Uh, I've got it on the times 100K, okay? And checking the, the checking it. I don't even get. Nothing, nothing. I get it over here on the uh, one meg scale. Nothing. I tried it with a digital meter. It's wide open. So, uh, there's one thing we can look at. Um, I will go in here and see if I can find the break. If it's easy to fix, we'll fix it. But let's look at the where it's at in the circuit, okay? The power supply, here's the first capacitor and the second capacitor with a choke. So the fuel coal is not being used as part of the filter. What it's being used for is the magnetic field for the speaker and a dropping resistor for this circuit. So this is supposed to be 2600 ohms, so uh, a high wattage 3K resistor will supply that. We can replace that with a um, with a um, permanent magnet speaker. I don't know, let's, let's tear in this and see what we find. Okay, I uh, cut into this. Now, I don't know if I did this when I went into it, but uh, this, this wire goes directly to this one. So that's not a big deal. Here's the other end. I could have spliced that back. The big problem was over in this area. You can see where I've done some excavations. The wire, the black wire, the other wire to the coal, it was actually the underneath where the coal was actually started was broken down in here. And I was trying to get enough lead down in here to get enough for this to work but it's a lost cause um, it was worth a try the output transformer is good probably end up using it um, as far as rewinding this uh, I wish it was one of those that comes apart but I think if you these are pressed together or spot welded together or whatever I'm not sure but uh, I've seen I think I've seen Don from Restore Old Radios he's had to drill this out and then end up having to put screws back in here to put it back together once he rewound it <clears throat> now here's what what's happening I've got a couple of feelers out on ARF and uh, also the 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 Philco forum uh, looking for one of these speakers because if you look it's uh, it's pretty unique it's very narrow it's very shallow and uh, of course the field coils this one is 2600 ohms the original schematic shows 1200 but uh, during the bulletins it was upgraded later to 2600 ohms so in the meantime, uh, I'm looking for a parallel path of success as we used to do in nuclear power. Uh, I've got people, I haven't got people looking, I've just put it out there seeing if somebody's got a, a spare one that's, that's good out there. What are the chances? I don't know. Uh, the other thing I'm doing is I'm looking for a shallow speaker about the same size that'll go into the hole. Uh, and uh, then we will uh, work on putting the uh, 
just a resistor in its place uh, for the field coil and then just use a permanent magnet. Uh, the problem is going to be is getting a permanent magnet speaker to fit in that hole. So that's that's where we're at with that. But uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and, and, and see if we can uh, make some uh, modifications and get the radio to work and uh, while we're waiting to see which route we're going to get to go. I've hooked this up temporarily using uh, some alligator clips. Uh, do this at your own risk. This is not the ideal way of doing anything. Um, and uh, it's like I tell my buddy Josh, uh, and he'll send me a picture, I'll send him a picture, is this safe? And uh, the usual answer is only if you're standing knee deep in salt water. But uh, I've got things insulated. But what I've done is I've took the output transformer and clipped it into the circuit where it needs to be to uh, supply the voltage to the uh, output tube. Uh, I've run the secondary of that output transformer to a temporary 4 inch speaker. Then what I've done is I've taken a, a, a 3K ohm power resistor and put it in the place of the field coil. Uh, and as you can see right there, it shows 1200 ohms, but this is an old, uh, there's a service bulletin that upgraded to 2600 ohms. So this is not part of the Pi filter of the, uh, of the power supply, uh, but it's necessary as far as the voltages so that the voltages won't be too high. It's got to drop the uh, uh, the power so it's a power dropping resistor so let's let's fire it up and see if we can get some sound out of it okay I've applied power and uh, got it up about 50 volts or so we've already conditioned uh, the current all oh, you just have to believe me um, current is uh, right around 300 milliamps about 100 volts as the tubes warm up uh, that current will go up closer to half amp. It's rated at 50 watts uh, anyway. So starting to get some sound and uh, I didn't always get this sound so let's uh, tune, tune around and see if we can find something. Sounds like it's tuning. Have you ever worked at a place where they didn't want you talking about your salary? There's the local station. Doesn't sound too bad. Now I have. There's some other stations. I've already been through this once. So when I went to do this, and remember when I first brought it up, it didn't work. I found the problem. Let me turn this off. I found the problem and started putting this resistor in. It still didn't work. Started having some problems. It just would not receive. Maybe you can say, and I finally found it, and this is all on me, guys. This one is on me. This wire, let me see if I can get it down here without getting you sick. Wire coming off the tuning condenser here. See the insulation missing and the bare wire? Guess where that bare wire was? It was right in the hole going through the chassis. And guess what that did? It caused the radio not to work. So anyway, got that done. I put this in temporarily just to see if it works, and it does. So I'm going to go back and change this wire out, uh, clean some stuff up, start looking for 
that other temporary speaker and maybe in the meantime a real speaker will come in but uh, that's about it for now guys um, and uh, that's all I know to do at this point I almost gave up on this thing because it was that one wire and that was an oversight on my part for not replacing that one wire so you know that's just the way it goes attention to detail and uh, it just uh, you either fix it <laughs> but a little bitty thing like that can run you up the wall sure can so let's uh, see if it'll tune again So we'll leave it at that. We'll end this one today. But we've got a clear path of where we've got to go with this. Let me turn it down. So tell me what you think. Like I say, I almost gave up on this thing today. So from Larry, from the hills of Tennessee, thanks for watching.